Hello, and thank you for joining me once again for the latest installment of The Vault. My name is Julie Fry, and I'm the curator at Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the cars that the Cyberlings owned, specifically a car that was purchased for Gertrude in 1907. Uh, the Cyberlings had owned automobiles really since the early 1900s, right as they became available and accessible. F.A. was very interested in this technology, very interested in owning an automobile or a horseless carriage, as they were sometimes called. Um, in 1907, though, he decided to purchase a new car and make it a gift to Gertrude. So he bought an electric car from the Columbus Buggy Company in Columbus, Ohio, and he surprised Gertrude with it one night. So Gertrude is writing to her daughter, Irene, uh, December 6th, 1907. This noon, we were talking about the resilience of the old coupe. He said we might as well sell it. We were joking about it and what it would sell for. After dinner tonight, Papa said he was going to hitch up and take the old coupe up to Heppert's for sale. After a while, Penfold came in and said Papa was ready and wanted me to come out to have one last ride. I had to go down to chorus rehearsal and hurried on my wrap and went out. There on the lawn under the oak tree was an electric coupe all lit up inside and out and Papa laughing at me and the children all running out and hopping up and down and shouting. Of course, I am more glad to have such a fine closed carriage and an electric machine at that. I have admired what those other people have and such, but never dreamed of having one, and it doesn't seem now as if we can afford it. I presume it has been managed in some business deal. Gertrude only has the car for about six months when her sister-in-law, Kitty Fiery, comes to town and Gertrude lets Kitty drive her new car. Kitty writes to Irene again on July 16, 1908, our visit would have been perfect if I hadn't smashed your mother's electric machine. I'm still broken up about it, but if we can get it fixed up as good as before, I will feel better. A couple months later, F.A. has now sent the car back down to Columbus to be repaired. He is writing to Kitty's husband, Louis Fiery, to talk about the repairs and kind of the experience of getting the car repaired. About that automobile that I sent down to Columbus to be repaired, I'm a little sorry I ever let it get out of Akron, as although it was returned looking as fine as new, it has already headed for a condition much like the one you last saw it in. Gertrude has used it but twice. The first time she came into the driveway on top speed and failing to direct it properly, struck the stone post of the driveway with the front spring, bending it down, and on the second trip succeeded in scraping the leather off of the right fender and getting it out of the barn. I've concluded that women are wholly unfit to run anything on wheels except a baby carriage. So you can see F.A. is a little frustrated with all of the repairs that are going into what was probably a very expensive automobile in 1907. The Cyberlinks continued to own this car until around 1911, and then he did sell it and get something else at that time. So thank you for joining me once again for the latest installment of The Vault. I look forward to sharing more again with you soon.